Hello everybody, I'm the Littlewood, also known as Martin, and welcome back to my office. Um, I don't really have a name for this show, it's just kind of a show where I show you stuff, kind of like a haul like I did for Comic Con, I should really have a clever name for it, in the Little Hall, seems like the obvious choice, but I don't know, if you've got anything creative, put it in the uh, comments section, the brand new comments section, which everyone hates, no! <laughs> I actually think it's okay, it gets rid of a lot of spam, and it, you see conversations better as well, I don't know, it's fine. Anyway, uh, so what apologies for not so many videos over the last week or so. I've been very, very busy. I've been back and forth between London, but you'll be glad to know that I'm not actually going anywhere now. I'm here in Bristol at my office for the rest of the year so I can really focus. We can get ready for the Christmas adventure. Yes, there is a Christmas adventure too coming. Um, and other than that, just generally doing content. And the second thing I want to apologise for is me for today's video. Um, I am the third person out at York Towers who is having wisdom teeth problem and it's not really any that I can do, it hurts to speak, but that is my job and I need to make videos for you all, so uh, so I don't want people in the comments going, don't worry about it, it's something I worry about every single day, it's fine. Anyway, uh, so I've got a couple of things that I'm going to unbox for you, and also each of them comes maybe with like a little story as well, or at the very least just some information about the thing uh, that I'm going to show you, and there'll be links in the description if you want to go and buy any of these things, um, or want to check out any more info on them. And the first one is this pretty standard looking Nintendo 3DS, but this is actually a recordable 3DS. Now, I know that Zoe has one of these. I don't know if she's ever done a video in this style, sort of telling people about them and stuff, and she probably gets a lot of questions, much as I probably will, over the next couple of weeks, because I plan to do a lot of Pokemon live streams. Uh, I might do some like highlight videos from that. And I also plan to play the brand new Zelda as well, the, uh, the Link Between Worlds. I'm going to play entirely on Twitch, and then I may upload it onto YouTube in episodes, if that's what people want to see. But I'm already doing Wind Waker, so it's kind of hard half and half. But I just wanted to show you, really, it's not much, but I wanted to show you exactly how this thing works, just for anybody that's curious, or anybody who's in the market for one. So this is the original back plate for the thing, it's very, very thin, it actually sends it in case you ever decide to change your mind. Uh, and then inside of here, I've already unboxed them, but I'll show you very quickly what we've got. We have got a USB to mini USB cable, which is incredibly long. I actually ordered the longest one I could, uh, just purely because, you know, some people's rigs, much like mine, are in an awkward position, so sometimes it's harder to get a USB cable to them. Uh, but yeah, it's a USB to mini USB cable. You plug one end to the PC, you plug the other end into the 3DS, it's very simple. And then you also have this thing, uh, which you can get lower packages, so they're not quite as high quality, but I just went for the best one I could. And it's a Kensington audio cable, so basically, this allows me to plug it into the headphone port on the 3DS and the other end goes into the line in of my PC and then I just have to do a little bit of trickery where I tell the microphone to listen to itself and I can hear it through a playback device. It's all very complicated. There are tutorials on the forums if you do invest in one of these. So um, yeah, just so you know about that. And then uh, we actually, to be fair, you get the charger cable as you'd expect and you get an extension lead for the audio jack as well. But here is the main piece looks exactly the same and honestly if I turn this over so you can actually see the USB port it's really not that much bigger you probably can't even see it right now I'm gonna wait for the camera to focus for a moment I'm just gonna put my hand here so you can't see hopefully that'll focus doesn't look like it's going to but there you go you can just about see that just here is where the uh, is where the actual cable goes in, and that doesn't really disrupt the in and out of the cartridge. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much all you have to do. So you whack this in. Uh, you also get an installation CD as well, which has the drivers and the software on. And it's very very simple. You just plug it in. Uh, the program comes up, you see both your screens on the computer, and something that I'm actually super relieved about is because the 3DS is obviously significantly smaller uh, than the XL, which I'm used to playing, I was worried that I'd have to look at this screen when I'm live streaming and stuff, but luckily, the software is perfectly in sync. It's crazy. I think XSplit, when you push it into there as a screen region, adds a tiny bit of delay, but I never watched the XSplit monitor. I only watched the actual game itself. So you can actually play this and actually have the, the, the screen up on your normal PC screen which is awesome. Of course the resolution isn't massive but you can stretch the window and stretch the actual image to whatever size you'd like so that's quite cool. And uh, yeah other than that it's super super simple. If you want to get one of these there are two stores that do them. I'm surprised more places don't but um there's only two people that I'm aware of. The first one is 3dscapture.com. You can go to that website and get that. That is for Americans. Now, you can get European ones on there, but there is a European store that that person recommends to you. 
and uh, I think the company was called Comtronic or something like that. I'll put a link to there in the description. Now the website is in German, but if you use Google Chrome or if you just go on to the Google Translate page and put the URL in, um, it will translate each page into English for you and it's a very simple checkout system. So I don't think you will have too many problems. So that is kind of the plan for my live streams over the next couple of weeks. Now that came uh, at when I got back from London and the reason I went to London, uh, well, actually two reasons I went to London. I'll show you this one first just because it's the quicker of the two, uh, was to go and check out some of the launch titles for the Xbox One. Now I did actually go to the Xbox One party at Gamescom, I got a t-shirt, I haven't told you this story I don't think, so we were at Gamescom, me, Shin and Kai stood outside having some food and some drinks and then Major Nelson, you know, he's the big Microsoft guy, comes out and he's got a t-shirt gun. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. He shoots one, lo and behold, it flies straight over. All I have to do is reach up and grab it and I've got a free t-shirt. I was like, yes! But then, a few seconds later, he shoots another one. It literally lands to the left side of me and I think... I've already got a shirt, I don't want to be greedy and grab another one, I don't want to look like that guy. This other guy walks from behind me, catches it, Major Nelson goes, congratulations, you got yourself an Xbox One. I was like, no, what is going on? I think I even did an Instagram video, actually, I'll put it just here and press play. That feeling when you're at an Xbox One party and you catch a t-shirt. Yay! Two seconds later, you let somebody else catch the other one, and they get an Xbox One. No! there see see so that was kind of like the bad story about that but anyway we went to an Xbox One event and I did forget to mention on Twitter what my recommendation was uh, out of all the games I've played for the launch lineup obviously it's gonna have Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4 uh, but other than those two which are already on you know pre-existing consoles Dead Rising 3 is fantastic it's so much fun and the thing that I like about it is just the sheer amount of zombies on the screen at one time that's one thing that a lot of games struggle with like in Left 4 Dead 2 I know Dan was telling me something like there's only ever 20 on the screen at once or something or in the spawn area whereas on this I think they literally have hundreds of them on, on the screen at any time and if that wasn't already impressive enough uh, you can actually do co-op on it so you can do online co-op they did say that they were going to really strive and try and get four players in the next one but having that many AI being in the exact same spot on so many computers is a very difficult task but already what they've done is absolutely fantastic it's somewhere between um, what I love to do in GTA which is driving around, killing, smashing stuff up, and the absurdity of Saints Row, and a little bit of Crackdown, if anybody's played Crackdown, uh, it was a great game, a lot of people only got it because if you bought that, you got a pre-order, or like you, beta access, I think it was, to Halo 3, so that's how old we're talking, this was like right at the back at the start of launch uh, for the Xbox 360, but anyway, that is my recommendation, if you want to get a launch title, it's very fun, the blueprint system is amazing, like combining weapons, you can even combine vehicles, so I got... I think it was a wheelbarrow and a motorbike and then when I put them together it became like this giant hot rods like steamroller thing I was like Pugh. it was so cool and I got a uh, I got an acoustic guitar and I got a machete and it just became this crazy like guitar wielding metal bladed thing it was so so cool it was really really cool uh, I can't praise that game enough the guys that showed us the game as well were really friendly and really awesome and also Zoo Tycoon that was the one that kind of caught me by surprise I quite like Tycoon games I know some people really really love them and translating from the PC onto a console they've actually done a pretty good job of it and you can ride around in this really cool like little buggy cart thing uh, so yeah so I thought that was pretty cool cool anyway let me show you this so we've got the lanyard standard uh, and there was a t-shirt but Kai's wearing that because she's sick today uh, but this thing has got to be the heaviest keychain I've ever owned in my life so I'll just show you this quickly um, it's just a nice little box presented I thought it was going to be a pen at first but it's just simply got the Xbox one logo on the front of the box it looks really really cool and then over here we actually have a miniature Xbox one now it's going to take a while for this to focus I think on the camera but hopefully it will do, and you'll be able to see it in all its glory. I'm just going to sort of put my hand up or something if I can. Maybe if I move it to here. Actually, yeah, that looks okay. You can just about see that. But if you look here, it's actually a miniature Xbox One. It's got, like, the, uh, the textured part just here. It's got the logo on the left-hand side. It even shows you the CD tray and the power button as well. And it's just really nice. It weighs a ton. I would never use it. But it's a very nice decorative piece for my shelf, which is quite cool. So there you go. That was from the Xbox thing. Now, that was on Tuesday night. Uh, and Monday night... 
I went to the Indigo 2 Arena, as you probably know, for the launch of Call of Duty Ghost. I'm actually still wearing my wristband. If you didn't know, I was one of the team leaders. Uh, so myself, uh, Rizzle Kicks, Wretch Free 2, uh, Jamal Edwards, Daniel Sturridge, Andros Townsend, and this the rugby guy who was probably the most friendly guy I met, and I don't remember his name, but he was really cool. And also Tina, a lady from Activision as well. We each had uh, a couple of fans be on our team, and we basically went head to head in the game mode Blitz, which was quite cool. And uh, yeah, the evening was good. So for people that want to kind of a lowdown on what happened, we arrived at the event, we met all of the guys upstairs. I got interviewed by SBTV, which if you want to see, I will put a little link up here to go and check that out. Uh, and I also got interviewed by Julia Hardy. Now, I don't know if that interview's gone out yet, but she interviewed me for Virgin. She normally works for SBTV, uh, but that evening she was working for them instead. So if that video does exist yet, because I saw the other ones go up, then that will be here as well. So click on those. And, uh, and yeah, it was really fun. I went and we also had to do a red carpet. Now that was the strangest thing to me. So they made us stand out there as a big group and take photos and they made us do individual ones. And this was literally like proper paparazzi. This was, you know, the big newspapers. There were 250 media outlets at this event. It was quite a lot of exposure for this channel, for the Sapling community. It was really, really cool. And um, and yeah, I sort of had to stand there in front of like an Activision and uh, Call of Duty board and basically have my picture taken and have like crazy amounts of flashing lights. I don't know how the celebrities do it all the time because it hurt my eyes. I thought like, you know, one camera at Minecon or a couple were bad enough, but these were like really intense. Uh, so that was quite strange. And then straight after that, we sat down, found out who each other were, and then we went through and played the first game. Now the first game we actually won, which was quite cool. We played against the rugby guy uh, and his team and we smashed it on Blitz. I think we got something like uh, 18 for six or was it 16 for eight? I think it was 16 for 8 because I remember we got double what their score was. And then the second game, uh, I think we were originally meant to be against Jamal Edwards, but something went wrong and we ended up going against, up against Daniel Sturridge and his team um, beat us only by about 4 points, I think. And we very, got very close to bringing it back, actually. We were on the back foot. I was terrible uh, for the first third of that game. I even killed myself with a grenade, but then I actually picked up my pace and we did a lot better. But, uh, but yeah, to the guys that were on my team, really awesome meeting you all. You were really cool and we didn't do too badly in fairness and the fact that he went on to win this is what I always say if I'm in a tournament and I get beaten by the person who ends up winning the whole thing then I don't feel quite so bad and it's quite cool um, anyway so following that event I came home to my office to find this now this will be uh, probably the biggest chunk of the video and this is the Call of Duty Ghost Prestige Edition now I did actually request this because the thing actually comes with a 1080p camera and the camera would actually look really good if we were ever to do any sketches if we ever wanted something tiny that was kind of like a GoPro, then this is the kind of thing that I'd be able to use. Now I'm just going to pop this box to the side. Uh, you got to see, you got the nice ghost logo just in the front there. And then basically you've got a nice little ribbon or a little strip, which allows you to open up the whole thing. And if I can hold this up without everything tipping out, you'll be able to see there's a nice piece of artwork right across the front. If I just hold that up for you and sort of do a very slow and professional pan, and there you are. So you probably guess which one's the camera. Uh, you get a hard cased version of the game, quite cool. I'm gonna see if there's any codes in here. Yes, there are that you're not allowed to see, because <laughs> otherwise you'll steal all my exclusive stuff. And then as expected, we have got the, is that a pre-install disc? Oh, okay, maybe it is, yeah. So there you go, you've got the game inside. You've got a nice spread across the back of that. Uh, I don't actually know what this is. What are you? I'm not quite sure. I think it's just some kind of like wristband that you can wear whilst you're playing if you want to be if you want to be that guy. It'll probably be for more decorative purposes on my shelf, but let's have a look at this thing. Kind of a nice felt finish actually on the uh, the part that it comes up in. Oh wow, this is actually incredibly sturdy. It doesn't feel quite like chain, but the actual roping is really, really tightly done. It's really nice. And I'm assuming if I oh god, yeah, you have to like properly unbolt it and unscrew it and then you've kind of got like three parts that can go into so you can change the uh the thickness and you can change like how much space you've got for your wrist and then it's got a really badass looking metal ghost logo on the front of it if it will focus hopefully so go on refocus maybe i'll put my hand there go on go on focus you're getting there you tried it you tried to focus no, you're not having any of it. But anyway, you can probably just about see from there. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. That's that. That's a nice little wristband that you get collected with this. I might actually wear that when I do the ghost streams. I'm not sure. Uh, pop that down there. And then, of course, the final thing, the thing I was excited for was a 1080p camera. Comes in a nice little Call of Duty Ghost case. Looks quite nice. Sort of looks like a care package. And if I just unzip this and open it up, there it is.
Look at that. So that thing there is actually the camera, uh, which looks really awesome. It comes with a nice little mounting bracket on the bottom of it. Uh, there is a lock on the back as well, so you can keep it in place. Uh, they've got a nice little film across the lens, which I'm just going to remove quickly. And it's actually got a 1080p HD, and it's got a 170 degrees wide-angle lens that you can see on the front, which is quite nice. And then what else do we have inside of here? I'm assuming we've maybe got some kind of a lens cap. That might be quite nice. Oh, okay, so we've got the mounting bracket, which is sweet. We've got a strap for holding it. I uh, don't even know what that little finicky thing is. Uh, oh, different. I think these might be different ways of mounting it. Oh, and some double-sided tape as well if you really want to make sure it sticks onto something. Because this is the kind of thing that we could use for a sketch at Yoga Towers if we ever do anything with like an assault rifle or something. You could plonk that on top. It would just look like a standard scope for the weapon. And it would actually mean that we wouldn't have to do double takes of stuff uh, to actually get the first-person perspective from the gun, which is sweet. Uh, and also... Really glad it comes with one of these. It's miniature. It's a, actually a micro SD card, but it comes with a four gigabyte micro SD card. And for 1080p footage, that will actually last you quite a while. And I'm glad they did that because sometimes you receive things and they don't give you SD cards and they just sort of leave you to it. And kind of like how some of the uh, the previous gen consoles never came with HDMI cables. It's like you need that for it to work. Why would you not include that? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> oh wow, is this really the USB cable for it? Okay, so. To make up for the awesomeness of it and the inclusion, oh actually maybe it's not as, no it is literally that small, that's insane I think, that's what I'm thinking. This basically at the minute looks like the tiniest USB cable in the world but it does have a clip that opens up. Oh okay hold on a minute, you know, this actually doesn't make it that much longer, it goes from being this length to be in this length. <laughs> it's not really a big deal. I mean, I put stuff on top of my tower anyway, but for people that will put them around the back, it's a pretty standard cable, the same kind of one that you plug into a PlayStation 3 controller, so you've got nothing to worry about. So there we go, that's everything I've been up to for the last couple of weeks. Hopefully that gave you a little insight into what I've been up to in London and whatnot. Oh, and the final thing as well, I got a brand new t-shirt. This might look the same as the one I had before, but they actually had a thing on Four Human Peoples, uh, which is Philip DeFranco's uh, t-shirt line, uh, where where Steve Zero goes, so they did a sketch where he hacked into the system, and the actual website was fantastic when they did this. All of the images like glitched, and then it would show like the Steve edited version of it. So the old one said "Keep Calm and Bam Fawn," which stands for Badass Mother. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and the new one actually has Steve Zaragoza's head. It's got him with the cap. It's got him with a burger and also the glasses as well. And then this actually says keep calm and nerd on and actually I was waiting for it to say nerd on for quite a long time so this actually came today so if you want to go and get one of these I don't think they're available anymore but I can say that anything from four human peoples is the most comfortable thing I've ever worn that and game tea those two just know exactly which shirts to pick but anyway thank you for watching everybody uh, do bear with me for the next couple of days I will be making content but because of this thing it might be a little bit difficult to make them very long or it might sound a little bit mumbly at times because I'm in a lot of pain but <laughs> Thank you for that, and I will see you all in a little bit. Bye!